What's up guys, Jason here. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple and efficient Minecraft Bedrock Villager Trading Hall. This Villager Trading Hall works on 1.19 and on all platforms of Minecraft Bedrock, whether you play on a phone, tablet, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, or PC. It will allow you to easily get trading discounts. By the way, this is an improved version of my previous Villager Trading Hall. For this villager trading hall, you'll need 1 glass block, 10 slabs, 11 torches, 1 lever, 1 redstone repeater, 6 redstone, 2 redstone torches, 1 trap door, 1 button, 2 pistons, 1 name tag, 1 dispenser, 10 workstations, by the way, you can use any type of workstation that you want, 1 bed, and finally about 3 stacks of solid blocks, you can use any type of solid block that you want. A couple examples of solid blocks are cobblestone or wood planks. The first step is to choose an area to make this villager trading hall at. This villager trading hall needs to be at least 100 blocks away from any villagers, beds, or workstations. After you are at least 100 blocks away from any villagers, beds, or workstations, place 21 solid blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Once you are done placing those 21 blocks, place 2 blocks over here. Then count 2 blocks to the left. 1, 2. Now place 2 blocks over here. Then count 2 blocks to the left. 1, 2. Then place two blocks over here. Now continue placing blocks in that pattern until you get to that side. After you are done with that step, the villager trading hall should look like that. The next step is to extend those walls up by two blocks. After you're done with that step, the villager trading hall should look like that. The next step is to place a block at each of these spots. Now place a block at each of these spots as well. After you're done with that step, place a slab at each of these spots. Each of these chambers is where a villager will go. The next step is to place a torch at each of these spots. Those torches will prevent mobs from spawning on the villager trading hall. The next step is to bring a villager over to this chamber. You can use any villagers in this villager trading hall except for green coat or baby villagers. That is because those villagers cannot link to workstations. If you want to use a baby villager to make this villager trading hall, you will need to wait until it grows into an adult first. Also, you should not use any villager that you have already traded with before. As you guys can see here, I have already traded with this villager before. I am now going to show you all one easy way you can bring a villager to a chamber in survival mode. To do that, first place 3 solid blocks over here. Then place two blocks over here. Then place two blocks over here. Two over here. And two over here as well. Now place a block at this spot. After you have done that, place two powered rails over here. Then place a lever at this spot. Now flick it down. As you guys can see there, that should cause those powered rails to get activated. The next step is to place five rails over here. Now place three rails over here. At this point, you can either take a villager over to this spot using a boat and a lead, or extend this rail system all the way over to the nearest villager. If you choose to extend this rail system after you have extended it, place down a minecart. Then push the villager into the minecart. You will then be able to push it over to the villager trading hall. If you want to transport a villager using a boat and a lead, first place a boat next to a villager. As you guys can see here, the villager should get into the boat. Then attach a lead to the boat. Now walk over to the villager trading hall. Either way, make sure you don't walk too fast, otherwise the lead will break. If that happens, you can reattach it. If you ever need to get the boat up a ledge, place water. Then pull the boat up the water. Once the boat is up here, you can pick up the water. After you have transported the villager near this rail system, break the boat. Then place a minecart over here. 
Now push the villager into the minecart. Then push it up this rail system. As you guys can see there, the villager should now be in that chamber. Once the villager is in the chamber, go to the back. Then break this block. Now break these two blocks as well. Then break the minecart. Once you have retrieved the minecart, place two blocks over here and a block at this spot as well. The next step is to place a block over here. Then break this rail system. The next step is to place a bed over here. Now wait for the bed to show green particles. Once the bed has shown green particles, it means that villager has linked to it. By doing that, this area will get designated as a village so you will be able to link all of the villagers to workstations. If you are unable to get the villager to link to the bed, try breaking all beds at the village or villager breeder you got the villager from. By the way, there only needs to be one bed in this entire villager trading hall. The next step is to link this villager to a workstation that you want to link it to. To do that, first break this block. Then place the workstation you want to link it to over here. Now wait for the villager to link to the workstation. As you guys can see here, the villager should then link to that workstation. You can now check its trades. If you want to get different trades instead, you can break the workstation. That should delink it from the workstation. Then place the workstation back down over here. As you guys can see there, the villager should then relink to the workstation. You can keep breaking and replacing the workstation until you get the trays that you want. The next step is to bring a villager over to this chamber. To do that, you can use the same method that I showed earlier. After you have made the rail system, you can extend it to the nearest villager. Another option is to use a boat and a lead, then transport the villager to a minecart over there. From there, you will be able to push the villager into the chamber. I am now going to demonstrate transporting a villager by extending this rail system. Once the villager is in that chamber, go behind it, then break these blocks. Now break the minecart, then replace these blocks. Then link this villager to the workstation that you want to link it to. Once again, if you want to get different trades, you can break and replace the workstation. The next step is to place a block over here. Now break the rail system. The next step is to bring a villager into each of the other 8 chambers. By the way, you should bring the villagers one at a time and make sure you link a villager to a workstation before bringing the next villager. Also, once you have brought a villager to a chamber, make sure you place a block at a spot. After you are done bringing all the villagers and linking them to workstations at this villager trading hall, go over here. Then count 10 blocks to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then count 5 blocks forward. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then break these two blocks. Now break these two blocks as well. After you have done that, place a piston over here. Make sure that piston is facing upwards. Then place a block at this spot. Now place three blocks over here. And three over here as well. Then place a dispenser over here. Make sure that the dispenser is facing this way. Now crouch down and place a button at this spot. Then place two blocks over here. Two over here. And one at this spot. Then place two blocks over here. And one over here. After you have done that, place a trap door at this spot. The next step is to go over here. Now place a piston at this spot. Make sure that piston is facing downwards. Now break this block so you can get out of this area. Then replace it. The next step is to place four blocks over here and one at this spot. 
After you have done that, bring a zombie over to that spot. I am now going to show y'all one easy way you can do that in survival mode. To do that, first place two blocks over here. Then place two blocks over here. And two blocks over here as well. Now go to this side. Then crouch down and place a block at this spot. Now place a block over here. Once you have done that, place a button at this spot. Zombie see button says full block, so that button will cause it to walk into that chamber. Now wait for it to turn night time. Once it is night time, look for a zombie. Once a zombie is following you, walk up here. Then jump over to this side. As you guys can see there, the zombie should fall into that chamber. The next step is to break this button. Now place a block at this spot. Then break these blocks that you placed to get the zombie down there. After there is a zombie in there, name it with a name tag. To name a name tag, place down an anvil. Then put the name tag in this slot. Now name the name tag anything that you want. I'm going to choose to name my zombie, Zombie. Now use the name tag on the zombie. As you guys can see there, it should then be named. That will prevent it from despawning. The next step is to place a block over there. That block will prevent the zombie from going up there. The next step is to go over here. Now place two blocks at this spot, one block over here and one block over here. Then break this block. Now place a lever over here, redstone torch over here and redstone repeater over here. Make sure the two prongs of that redstone repeater are facing that way. Then place redstone at this spot. After you have done that, flick this lever down. Now click this redstone repeater three times. It should now look like that. That will make the redstone clock slower. The next step is to break these three blocks. Now place two redstone over here. As you guys can see there, that should cause that piston to extend. Now place a glass block over here. Then place a redstone at this spot. After you have done that, place a solid block over here and redstone torch on top of it. Then place two blocks over here. Now place two redstone over here. The next step is to break this block. Now break this block as well. Once you have done that, bring a villager over to that chamber. You can bring any type of villager except for a baby villager. By the way, you can easily bring a villager over there in survival mode by using the same method of transporting villagers I showed earlier. After there is a villager over there, break the minecart. Then place a block at this spot. Then break the rail system. The next step is to add some weakness errors to the suspenser. You can add any amount of weakness errors you want, however the more weakness errors you add, the longer you'll be able to use this villager trading hall for before having to add more weakness errors. Either way, to get weakness errors in survival mode, you can first place a weakness potion in a cauldron. Then hold arrows and click on the cauldron. As you guys can see here, that will make them weakness arrows. The next step is to place a torch over here. This is the villager curing chamber. It will be used to get trading discounts. I am now going to show you all how to use this villager trading hall. At this point, I recommend you set the world difficulty to hard so that the villager does not have a chance of dying when attacked by the zombie. The first step is to flick this lever up. That will cause the pistons to move back and forth, which will cause the zombie to stay in its spot while also still being able to attack the villager. Once the villager has turned into a zombie villager, flick this lever down. Now push this button. By pushing that button, a weakness arrow will hit the zombie villager. Now feed it a golden apple. Now wait for a couple of minutes for the zombie villager to get cured. You can tell it is being cured because it will show red particles. After the zombie villager has been cured, all the villagers will have trading discounts. As you guys can see here, there are discounted trades. For example, with this villager, instead of 24 paper for an emerald, it is 23 paper for an emerald. All the villagers in the villager trading hall will now have a discount. If you want to get even more of a discount, you can convert this villager into a zombie villager again. Then cure it. 
Once it is cured, you will have even more trading discounts. Now that the villager has been cured again, there will be even more discounts. You can keep turning this villager into a zombie villager and curing it to get increased trade discounts. This villager trading hall can be especially useful for getting enchanted books. If a villager ever runs out of stock for a trade, wait for one Minecraft day. It should then restock its trades. If after a while the villagers in this villager trading hall increase their trade prices, you can get more of a discount again by converting this villager into a zombie villager and curing it. If your dispenser ever runs out of weakness arrows, you'll need to add more weakness arrows to be able to cure the zombie villager again. By the way, this villager trading hall is expandable. If you want to expand it, you can build another row of villager chambers on that side. If you want to make this villager trading hall smaller, you can make less villager chambers. If you choose to expand this villager trading hall, first place a workstation at this spot. After that villager has been linked to a workstation, you can build more villager trading chambers. As you guys can see there, I was able to easily expand this villager trading hall. If you want to be able to easily get a lot of villagers for this villager trading hall, I recommend you make my easy 1.19 villager breeder. If you choose to make this villager breeder, I recommend you place 3 blocks over here. Also, if you choose to make this villager breeder, make sure you build it at least 100 blocks away from the villager trading hall. Also, make sure you wait for the baby villagers in this villager breeder to grow into adult villagers before bringing them over to the villager trading hall. A link to my tutorial for this villager breeder is in the description. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this simple and efficient Minecraft Bedrock villager trading hall. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my other Minecraft videos. Thanks for watching.